Coming up on We Talk News this week, the first week of numbers are in from adult use sales in Ohio, and $11 million passed through the registers over the first seven days. We'll hear from Ohio's Tim Johnson from Cannabis Safety First. In California bus illegal grows and storefronts in Los Angeles while confiscating 2.2 million packages of cannabis. Plus, Missouri dispensaries have to remove 135,000 products from their shelves and lock them in their vaults after the regulatory board discovers untested products on the shelves and not recorded properly in metric, the state's seed-to-sale tracking software. And the U.S. Congress gets regulatory advice on hemp from an unlikely source, the alcohol industry, which is fast becoming the plant's best advocate in Washington, D.C. And... This dispensary in Connecticut is getting a lot of attention for all the wrong reasons. All that and coast-to-coast cannabis news with Elena Pinto next. We are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Weed Talk News, Pro Cannabis Media's weekly roundup of cannabis news from coast to coast. I'm Elena Pinto. Adult sales in Ohio are off to a great start. If you ever wondered, though, what the difference is between a market limited to just medical sales and when it's open to all adults for sale, how does a sales increase of 270% sound? It's pretty amazing, right? That's the result of just over $11 million in sales since August 6th, which was opening day. Tim Johnson is a retired law enforcement officer and trainer who is now part of Cannabis Safety First. PCM founder Jimmy Young talked to Tim last week, and this week he has his reaction to the first week of sales in the state where he worked to establish adult use. My reaction is, you know, I'm impressed. Um, I don't believe that we reached our full potential, but it's definitely a a very large uh, start for uh, what Ohio has to come. I believe. And I think, you know, there are many variables that play in this. It, it is the first week. So there's a lot of curiosity purchases. It is the first week. So there's a lot of uh, surrounding states that don't have programs that are coming into Ohio to purchase. Uh, I'm still confused of the high prices. I think that scared a lot of people off. I think it lessened the sales because of prices. And there were people that saying, hey, I spent my whole allotment in one day for the whole month. Um Maybe, you know, once those prices do come down and level out to where they're, you know, practical and affordable, uh, we'll see people, you know, purchasing more. In Loveland, Ohio, Emily and Mark seek to deepen their bond through intimacy. They turn to Yellow Labs Rose Oil Massage Cream with delivery technology, promising enhanced pleasure and connection. The cream ignites increased sensitivity and arousal as they apply it, kindling a shared passion. Excited by its effects, they find joy in shared closeness and moments of unity. The Ohio Cannabis Report is supported by Yellow Labs and Better Ways to THC.com. Search for Yellow Labs near me and find one of 40 dispensaries in Ohio carrying these amazing mists and creams. In New York this week, there was a bit of a scare when a judge allowed a convenience store in the city to reopen after being shut down by New York Mayor Eric Adams's Operation Padlock. The question now is, will this be a precedent case that allows more illegal shops to shut down that shutdown to reopen? It's very doubtful, says attorney Jeffrey Hoffman, who still hosts his live Ask Me Anything show on Wednesdays at 420 on LinkedIn. Is this a precedent for uh, breaking the back of the padlock program in New York? No. Good. No, Tell it's me why and, and why no one should be worried about it. Because it's not a precedent of anything. Yeah. If you don't Mirandize people that you arrest, they get off of everything that you arrested them for. Full stop. We're done here, right? Yeah. And this is the same thing. You don't serve process to somebody in a civil suit. The judge throws it out. This is this is legal one on one. This is stuff a law student. Not even you don't even know law. This is a, someone applying for law school could get right. Yep. And so, like, yes, I get it. it. Does open everyone's eyes to the fact 
that they are improperly serving people and then keeping the stores closed after they improperly serve them. I mean, this is a no brand. I mean, it's just, look, it's all correct, but the fact that it deserved any ink in a newspaper, I mean, just because it, ha I mean, just, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. So same thing as always, you don't serve people, you don't follow proper procedures in any situation, any, any, any situation, you're going to get thrown out of court. The state of Colorado, along with Washington state, were the first two states to legalize adult use of cannabis in this country, but it hasn't all been smooth sailing to golden pastures in either state. Like many state programs, the fees to just be in business can be astronomical and, to be honest, unfair. That's happening now in Colorado, and needless to say, that industry is aghast at the increases. We have a new Colorado correspondent, and he is the chairman of the Colorado Cannabis Chamber of Commerce. Xavier Gillet is his name. I'm Xavier Gillet. I'm the chair of the Colorado chapter of the Cannabis Chamber of Commerce and a non-attorney professional at the McDonald Hopkins Law Firm. And I'm coming to you this week with the Colorado Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. I have two stories to report on this week, and they're somewhat interrelated. The first one being that the Marijuana Enforcement Division here has issued notice to licensed operators that it intends to increase license and renewal and even patient registration fees in 2025. The proposed increases amount to almost doubling the licensing fees as they currently stand, and many licensed operators have expressed their discontent with this news. The Colorado market has widely been reported on as being a tough market for brands and licensed operators to thrive in, let alone survive in. And so this increase in fees is likely to uh, further accelerate the consolidation of the market and potentially force many longstanding brands to exit or even shut their doors completely. Now, many of those brands over the last five years have pivoted to producing hemp derived cannabinoids. Which brings us to our second story, and that is that Mammoth Farms, the largest licensed cultivator here in Colorado, filed a lawsuit against Bonanza Labs. Bonanza Labs is a licensed infused product manufacturer here in the state, and the lawsuit alleges that Bonanza has been using hemp-derived Delta-9 THC as opposed to marijuana-derived Delta-9 THC to infuse its products. Now, the introduction of hemp-derived THC into the marijuana system here in Colorado is prohibited by rule. And so if this lawsuit does turn out to be true, it'll be interesting to see how the Marijuana Enforcement Division punishes Bonanza or reacts to the outcome of the lawsuit moving forward. Many other states do look to Colorado as a leader in policy when it comes to marijuana, hemp, and cannabis overall. And so this is likely to be a case that many other policymakers are keeping a close eye on across the United States. That's the Colorado Cannabis Report for this week. I'm Xavier Jaye with the Cannabis Chamber of Commerce and McDonald Hopkins Law Firm, and I'm looking forward to joining you next week. Michigan's cannabis market continues to grow and now right behind California in revenue. The Great Lakes state has passed the golden state for number of products sold every month. Now that Ohio has passed adult use legalization and opened for business, Michigan might lose some border business. Amy Carter has more from the state of Michigan. I'm Amy Carter from Michigan Weedsters with this week's Weed Talk News. Michigan cannabis gold rush may soon be over. Cannabis insiders say the Michigan cannabis market could soon be past the saturation point. The CRA reported the average price in June for retail flour was $85.88, which is the lowest point in 2024. Recreational cannabis sales in Ohio have been legal for a week and business is booming. Sales in Ohio are rivaling some of the top cannabis markets in the country. It's also attracting customers from nearby states where recreational isn't legal. But prices remain high in comparison to Michigan. One Ohio store in Toledo advertises 14 gram jars of marijuana for $170. While the average sale price of flour in Michigan dipped to a record low, just under $80 per ounce. Ohio Commerce data indicates the average retail cost for an ounce of marijuana was about $266 during the first five days of sales. 
A new soda is entering the Michigan market for those jonesing for something more than sugar and caffeine. Seattle-based Jones Soda Company is launching its cannabis-infused soda brand, Mary Jones, in Michigan in September. However, Michigan regulates hemp-derived cannabis the same as marijuana, meaning any intoxicating hemp products like Mary Jones must be manufactured in the state and sold at state-regulated dispensaries. And lastly, some exciting news out of Gaylord, Michigan. Meds Cafe is officially opened. I stopped by to congratulate Al Witt at the grand opening. His journey has been an interesting one from jail to probation, activist to city council member, and now an entrepreneur. Way to go, Al. I'm Amy from Michigan Weedsters. We'll see you next week. There's more and more attention by various state legislatures on what to do with all those Delta 8 products that are ending up in convenience stores and gas stations. Politicians are finally realizing the mess they created with the 2018 Farm Bill that allowed the growing of hemp. That's the cannabis sativa plant with less than 0.3% THC. The hemp industry did get a win this week in California when a bill that would have wiped out the entire cannabinoid-derived market in that state got thrown out. If there's one country in the world where cannabis could maybe help them get through a war, it's Ukraine. And this week, that country's controlled legalization of medical cannabis started. 30% of their military veterans and current enlisted personnel suffer from PTSD and now covered under the state-run program. Patients must be prescribed the plant medicine by a certified doctor who has diagnosed specific conditions like PTSD, cancer, and epilepsy. Hemp has also been legalized for medical, industrial, and scientific purposes. This is a totally controlled state-run distribution and diagnosis program, and there is no plan for recreational sales to adults. You do have to wonder, though, how long it will take for Ukrainians to figure out how to make Delta-8 products from hemp that do get you high. It's just how humans behave. Well, next up, Virginia with Joe Parsons. Here he is. I'm Joe Parsons with the Virginia Cannabis Connection, and this is the Virginia Cannabis Report on We Talk News. Since I relocated home to Virginia almost two years ago, it's been challenging to stand up and speak out for reform and legalization here in the Commonwealth. However, one of the things that has driven me is how strongly that I believe cannabis has changed my life for the better. Scott McStacy from Sativix Agricultural has not only been an amazing resource for helping me to reach others, but through multiple interviews and conversations, we became great friends. We also share something much bigger. We're both survivors who believe cannabis saved our lives. You also are a cancer survivor. Um, tell us about that if you don't mind. I will, uh, and I'm happy to because, you know, um, we do share this, and that's a special bond, Joe. Thank you. Uh, in 2003, um, I had developed a tumor the size of a French bread. It was it was 11 inches long and nine inches around. I didn't know I had it. I was very heavy at the time, and it burst inside me. Mm. So I was in sepsis, as you can imagine, and that's the infection of the abdomen that can kill virtually anybody. Um, they told me that there was very little, if anything, they could do and for me to prepare. So I did. I laid there and I thought about it. And honestly, I had had a really rough run up to then. I had gotten divorced and I was angry. And, and that led to the cancer, along with being a heavy drinker. And so I just accepted it and laid back. And then there came a call from a surgeon at a different hospital. And he was a, a colorectal specialist, one of the best in the world. And he just happened to be on call and he saw my MRI. Well, he said, bring him to me. I think I can cut it out. I might be able to save him, which is exactly what he did on the table. Um, after that, after 17 days in intensive care um, and then transitioning to a regular room and getting ready to go home, the surgeon came back to me. And he handed me this big mason jar full of what looked like lettuce or something. <laughs> and I saw it and I said, what's this, doc? And he said, Scott, your medicines are not working for your anxiety. It's bad. 
your inflammation is terrible, and your pain management is non-existent. And the medicines just weren't helping. And he said, I think you should, you're a candidate in my mind for medical cannabis. And Joe, I looked him in the eye and I said, what the hell is medical cannabis? I had no idea what that that was even a thing. And I mean, I said, do you mean like pot? You know, back then, that's what most of us called it. Grass, and, yeah. Uh, or exactly, grass, pot, weed, whatever, you know, the slang. I didn't know. I was, you know, I was like I said before, I was really a binge drinker. And it, it was a college thing. And it, it extended past that. And that really led to this, this particular type of of a tumor. I got home and I went and I got a a bong from my brother of all people and I immediately dosed myself like the doctor said to do. And within minutes, Joe, I felt the inflammation and the pain start to subside. I was not at all at that moment worried about it either. And that anxiety drop helped me to start to heal. Um, I was able to eat eventually. It took about 20 days before I could eat again. Um, but I, once I started using the cannabis, it really, it affected my appetite. It helped with virtually every aspect of my recovery. Um, and most of all, it helped me psychologically because it gave me a peace of mind that I had never had before that. Um, and I credit this plant and, and free the plant once again, that's important, but I credit this plant to saving my life. And I tell the story a lot, Joe, you know, I've told you before, that's how we first bonded. And, and, you know, when I talk to people and tell them this, the most ardent prohibitionist will start to soften because they see that this they see a human being that's still here 21 years later because of this plant it's a powerful powerful thing thank you scott for sharing your story with us we'll keep fighting the good fight together you can count on that if you'd like to share your story about how cannabis has changed your life reach out to me and i'll help you get your story heard well that's going to do it for this week from the virginia cannabis connection I'm Joe Parsons reporting for Weed Talk News. Until next time, stay lifted. That'll do it for the A Block, but we have plenty more state to state reports from Florida to Oregon. And wait until you hear what Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said about True Leave, his state's largest multi state operator. Weed Talk News continues after this. Ready to take your craft to the next level? Imagine faster extractions, purer products, and more profits. Sounds good, right? At Pure 5 Extraction, we've revolutionized cannabis extraction with our game-changing technology. No solvents, no heat, just the cleanest, most natural process on the market. Whether you're a boutique grower or a large-scale operation, Pure 5 has the tools to elevate your business worldwide. Visit pure5extraction.com today. Pure 5 Extraction, because your plants deserve the best.